Hey there, how are you? Let me adjust my camera. Does my camera look foggy to you? It's foggy to me. Am I foggy? Hey, how are you? Thanks for jumping on and joining me. How are you guys? My necklace seems really shiny. Hi, Laura, how are you? Thanks for joining me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, I just want to share with you guys, I've been sharing lately, thank you for the hearts, um, that I have been going through this journey of adrenal fatigue, and as I go through it, I promised that I was going to share the info with you, so that is what I'm doing. For you, those of you that don't know me, my name is Allison Dimsky. And I help women with confidence and mindset so that they're happier and healthier. Um, in amongst, I just, I was going to say, I just went to the doctor today and got some blood drawn because um, I have been dealing with um, adrenal fatigue. And I just want to cover the symptoms with you guys again because so many of these things are things that especially us women overlook. And I can't tell you how many people have reached out to me about this since I've started sharing it saying, I think I have that, I have it, I've been dealing with it, I've been trying to recover from it. So many. And again, there's so many of these things with the fatigue that we just overlook. We over, we just um, kind of say like, you know, I'm tired, I'm stressed. Um, I have so much going on, like we just pass it off. Thanks for joining me um, as just our day-to-day -day lives. And if you put all those symptoms together, all of a sudden you realize like, whoa, there could be a problem here. So I went to my doctor today to go get, thank you for the hearts, to go get some blood drawn um, because of all my symptoms. And I start naming off the symptoms to my nurse and she's like, oh my goodness, you really need to be here. And my doctor too, she said too, she said, Definitely, those symptoms are not to be overlooked and I'm so glad that you came in. So let me cover my symptoms with you guys again. And if you have, I would say three to five of these things, dig deeper and see if this is something that you might be dealing with too. Because you should not be tired all the time. That is not the way we are designed. Like our bodies are fantastic, they're awesome. God created these awesome bodies to repair and being tired all the time is not one of the things that it should feel. So let me cover my symptoms and you tell me, you know, is this something that maybe you're dealing with? And I had to write them down. I was, they'd be gone. So one of the things is definitely the fatigue where you feel tired all the time. No matter how much sleep you get, thank you for the hearts, you are still exhausted. You could go to bed at 9 o'clock, like me. I'll go to bed at 9 o'clock. I will lay down with my kids, fall asleep, and I'll get up again maybe around 6, and I'm exhausted still. There's no real reason for that. Or I could even have longer periods of sleep. Like during the summer, there were some days I would sleep from like 10 o'clock at night till 8 o'clock in the morning and wake up be exhausted. That's not normal. Or you're ch chugging through Target and you're thinking, I could lay down right here, right now on this carpet and take a nap just exhausted and it weird you know in times that it shouldn't be i also thought of times of where i'm driving and it's like i don't know 11 o'clock in the morning or something and i'm exhausted driving to where i'm like i need some like some serious tea or something just to keep me going it's that i need that caffeine that's not normal so the fatigue is a big one um also if you are exhausted after workouts if you, or even if you do like yard work, it's normal to be tired, but it's different to be exhausted. So any type of exertion that you do on yourself, um, if you feel like after working out, you need to go lay down and take a nap, like you just want to curl up in a ball, you can't hardly function, um, you have a real hard time moving on from it. That's not normal either. Thank you guys so much for the hearts. I really appreciate them. Um, do where you, um, sorry, I lost my train of thought. And that's one of the things too. Um, but if you're feeling exhausted after your workouts and even some days it will last until the next day, 
that is not normal either. You, after your workouts, it's, especially if you really exert yourself and you do a really hard one, it's normal to feel kind of tired, shaky, all those things. But your body should be able to recover from that and then you should feel like you could take on the world after your workouts. If you're not feeling that, if you're feeling exhausted, um, that's something to check off the list of that's not quite right. Another thing is the foggy head. You could be mid-sentence, cruising along, talking, and all of a sudden you totally forget what you're talking about. I can't tell you how many times, and I realized that I think I've been dealing with the fatigue a lot longer than I think I have um, today talking to my doctor because there's so many times I'd be talking to a friend and just chugging along in a conversation all of a sudden be like, okay, where was I going with that? And like could not pull it back together. Like it's normal for, for me to be chugging along in a conversation and kind of forget where I was and like, okay, I was going somewhere with that. But this was completely different. This was like, I had no clue. I could not, you do that? Yeah, it's frustrating, isn't it? It's very frustrating to do that where I'll be cruising along in conversation and I really can't like pull back and go, uh, like I have no clue where I was going with it. I don't even know what I was talking about. So one thing I've had to do is learn to write down. Um, or it can even happen just like mid-sentence. I've had that before where I'm just talking and it's gone, gone. Can't recover it, like no clue. Yes, it's like a fog that just comes over me. Yeah, that's exactly how it feels with me where it's just like, whoa where'd it go <laughs> and it sucks it's horrible it's yeah it's not fun another thing of my symptoms and are also symptoms of the adrenal fatigue is anxiety like where you just have it does it doesn't make sense like the anxiety where when you're feeling it and how you're feeling it doesn't make sense um, there's like real no reason for the anxiety or you are um, little things that shouldn't cause anxiety, cause anxiety. And like an example I gave on my Facebook today was like if you run out of milk and you like have all this anxiety over running out of milk, like seriously, it's milk. It's okay. You'll get over it. You can go to the store. But if you're having major anxiety or just little things like that, that could be a sign too. If you're needing caffeine to feel like you can actually function, like I'm not a huge caffeine person, but over the past, I don't know, four to six weeks, I've really like needed the caffeine just to feel like my brain can even work. Has anyone felt like that where you just need that extra energy to feel like you can function that day or just so your brain can actually like think about what is going on and be able to put everything together and so if you're feeling like that and you're needing that caffeine, you're needing that stimulation for your head, that's another one. Um, if you have trouble sleeping, my problem has never been trouble falling asleep. Some people do have trouble falling asleep. My problem has been staying asleep. Like I could wake up five, six, seven times in the middle of the night. I don't wake up for very long. Some people wake up and have trouble falling back to sleep. My problem is I just wake up, I wake up, back sleep, wake up, back sleep, which is really annoying because you don't ever really feel rested, which is probably part of the reason too when I wake up, I'm exhausted. So that is another warning sign. Some other warning signs. Oh, thank you, thank you. I assume that you, is it Nicole, that you are dealing with it too? Is that right? Thanks for saying you love my scope, I appreciate it. And thank you for the hearts. I've been seeing your hearts, thank you, Nicole. Yes, my doctor is doing the blood test to just, yeah, as formalities. Yes. Yes. So another thing too for some people is that they can gain weight or lose weight all of a sudden. Um, or another thing is where you plateau. And if you're like, since I'm a coach, um, I deal with a lot of people dealing with plateaus and I know how to get over those plateaus. You know, either you need, your body's gotten too smart on you and you either need to um, change your workout or change the way you're eating. And so I was doing all those things that I knew I needed to do, but yet my body was plateauing. And I even saw where I like, my scale never really went up, but like it seemed like weight was like 
holding on like in my midsection. So that could be a real, especially if you have hyperthyroid, um, gaining weight or losing weight all of a sudden is a big clue to that. I have my thyroid checked a million times and the majority of these symptoms. Did your doctor ever say yes? Because I know like my doctor, um, I'm very fortunate. My doctor is a huge um, into hyperthyroid. I don't know how else to say it. Um, she is very, is my necklace bugging you guys? I feel like it is, it's shiny. <laughs> um, she is really big into, a big advocate of getting thyroids under control. And I know she was saying too, like there's this big window of like what is normal and no thyroid, just but, but ran more, okay, so no thyroid, just, but you ran more tests, ultrasound, x-ray. Oh wow, you're having a whole bunch of testing done. I haven't gotten to that point yet. I'm hoping that I don't have to get to that point. I'm hoping my blood work will show whatever it needs to show. But there's this window of like what's normal. And she was saying that for her patients, she wants you on the low side of normal, not the high side. Like she doesn't like that. I think she thinks like the the normal scale is too wide is what she was kind of saying. So she was saying she wants her patients on the low side. And so if I'm not on the low side, then um, she's going to suggest a lot more things for me. It's been going on for months now, I wish. Thank you, thank you, I appreciate that. Yeah, I know everyone that I've talked to um, that has dealt with this, it's a long process, unfortunately. It's a long process to recover it. Um, I just had somebody message me today saying they've been dealing with it for 18 months and still are trying to recover. Um, it's a long process and I really feel like a lot of women deal with it because you think about it and we just have, there's a lot of things going on. There's a lot of things that we're expected to take on, you know, of taking care of the house, the kids, the bills, the groceries, getting this kid here, but yet you still need to be over here getting this kid over here at the exact same time. So you need to split in half and go two different directions. And um, there's just a lot on mom's plates and there's a lot of responsibilities on us. And it's hard to do it all and I think a lot of times, just like with fitness, we put ourselves last. And so we know that we're tired. We know we're exhausted. We know that maybe something's not right, but we put ourselves on the back burner and think, you know, or just pass it off as being tired and being a mom. And, you know, just because your mom doesn't mean you feel bad, right? Thank you. Um, so, yeah, I think... It's starting to be, you know, I don't know, um, but to me, with just the little bit that I've put out here about this, it seems like it's almost like this epidemic that's coming for us moms. And if we don't start taking care of ourselves better and start seeing the signs that it's just going to get worse and you can hear more and more people talk about it and more and more, especially women, talk about it because we all feel like we can do it all. We feel like, like for these super women that I can do this and I can do that and I don't need any help and um, it's not true. Your body's going to compensate for all that stress at some point. I completely agree and my doctors misdiagnose this issue. Yeah, many doctors do misdiagnose it or they don't see it as, you know, a lot of times, like for me, I knew exactly what I was going into the doctor talking about. I was saying, I'm tired, and I had my list of my symptoms. And so if you go in there going, yeah, I'm just really tired all the time. Like, that could leave your doctor down a whole different, all these different directions of maybe you're deficient in vitamin B. Maybe you need more vitamin D. Well, you're stressed. You just have anxiety. It could leave them all the, down the different routes. Well, because I had a whole list for my doctor and kind of had done a little bit of my own research and reached out to people and talked to them, I, she right away said, definitely, we have got to look at your thyroid. Yes, you have a fatigue issue. We've got to get this fixed. So that helps too. You've got to be your own advocate, people. We've got to be your own advocate because 
what they learn, what doctors learn in books versus what's really going on is very different. And so it also depends on your doctor, honestly. Uh, the last thing to um, to talk about symptoms, and this is one that I haven't dealt with as much. I've had to, I've dealt with it just a little bit, is where you have all of a sudden a change in cravings. If all of a sudden you really, really crave, crave sweet things or you really, really crave salty things. For me, all of a sudden I started to crave salty things. I've always had a major sweet tooth. Ask anybody who knows me. I'm like sweet tooth queen over here. So that was nothing new. But all of a sudden... Um, having a craving for salty was a little bit different um but that wasn't like a huge issue for me and I didn't even think about it until after I started reading about different um symptoms of it so um I hope this helped you guys um I'll keep you guys updated more on what is going on um I will get some blood work back hopefully by Friday maybe we'll see um, to let you know, do you guys have any questions for me at all? I'll be happy to answer any questions. If I know them or if I don't know them, <laughs> I can find out. I am learning so much so quickly and learning that this is a huge, huge issue. Um, more so than I realized. I kind of thought I was weird when I started having all these symptoms. And now I'm realizing like... There's a lot of us out there that are having these symptoms. And if you're having trouble losing weight and you feel like you're done everything and that you're following um, programs exactly how you should, or, you know, when you do your workouts, you're exhausted, or, you know, there could be something more. Is this something you could go in and out of? Yes. Um, I do believe so. And I'm learning more about that. But um, yeah, it is something that you can, where you can kind of go in it, or like your symptoms get less. I don't know if you can go in and out, but I know that your symptoms can become less, and then your symptoms can become a lot worse at different times, and I'm sure that major factor is stress on it. That was a good question. Any other questions? Thank you guys for joining me. I really appreciate it. Um, and I still have told you guys that I'm going to give you guys a list of like what to eat and what to stay away from. Um, unfortunately, one of those things is caffeine. And I did that, just to be completely honest, I did it one day without caffeine. And I was a mess. I was a complete and total mess. So that's going to be really hard for me because it was just my it's that brain fog that caffeine does something for my head to keep my brain from having that fog. And it was so hard to get anything done that day and to stay focused because of dropping that caffeine. But I know that's something that I'm going to have to ditch. Um, and there's other foods that help with it for sure. And there's other foods that hinder it as well. Um, and then I also, I already I told you guys too, that I'm going to um, give you some supplements that are extremely helpful with this too. Um, some of it, some of this stuff I've been kind of holding off on because I want to make sure that I'm giving you guys accurate information. I don't want to give you just kind of like just put it out there and be like, yeah, I think this works or yeah, I think this is what you're supposed to do. I want to make sure it's accurate information that I'm giving you guys. So um, some of it I've just been holding off on. I've been talking to um, friends who have reached out to me that who have it, who have been dealing with it for. 18 months, two years, five years. Um, I've also um, wanted to get some, I wanted to go to my doctor and talk to her about it some too. So know that when I am giving you this information, sharing this information with you, that it's stuff that is reliable, not just kind of like, oh, well, I think this might work. This is stuff that I am talking to people about and learning because I don't want to do all kinds of bunch of trial and error either on this. Um, I know there is some of that where there, you know, some of it is trial and error because everybody's body is different and so they react differently. I know with food, it's a lot of it is trial and error um, of what your body can handle and what you can't. So I just want to give you guys the most information and most accurate information that I can. If you have any questions, know that you can connect with me. I am Allison Dimsky on any social platform, whether it be Twitter. Instagram or Facebook. 
so you can tweet me. Thank you for the hearts. Um, you can also email me. I, I'd be happy to answer your emails. Um, my email is Allison, that's with one L, Dembski at yahoo.com. It's also in my bio. Thank you for the hearts. All right. If you guys don't have any other questions, I am going to turn the scope off now. Thank you for joining me. Mwah! Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And um, share the scope. If you think um, this would help somebody else, please share it. Because there's other, especially like I said, there's other women out there that I know are dealing with this and don't know what they're dealing with. So, so they know that there's hope out there for them and that this can be fixed. Please share it. All right. I will talk to you guys later. Um, and until next time, I'll see ya.